listeners, and welcome to Willow's Wonderful Tales. Today's story is called The Last Fairy and the Mage. Hidden in the lush forest of a kingdom called Zell, there lived a mysterious mage named Oriole. Ink black hair fell in waves past his shoulders, his sapphire colored eyes held a dark and mysterious look. Adorning his ears were tiny silver earrings, and if one looked closely, they resembled dragonflies. Designs of silver moons littered his blue robes that seemed to shimmer and sparkle even without the sun. The only time he bothered to leave his house was to collect herbs and flowers for his many spells and potions, both of which he was known and revered for. People across the kingdom and beyond would travel and pay him immense amounts of money just to get a potion or spell that suited their needs. Despite all the fame, Oriole was not one for conversing with others, and he was often silent, keeping to himself. Many people took this as an offense, yet most of them didn't have the courage to confront the mage for fear of not being granted access to his potions and spells. One day, as was his usual habit, he went out to gather herbs and flowers from the same place he always went. The flower field was in full bloom, carpeting the entire floor of the meadow with colorful blossoms in many different shades of pinks, purples, yellows, oranges, and so on. As he plucked the stems of the flowers, he tossed them into a large coal-colored basket with handles. When he came to a row of dark pink roses, he heard a tiny voice coming from within the cluster of flowers. Excuse me, I was wondering if I could trouble you to leave a few of the roses? They're one of my favorite flowers, and they don't really grow in any other place. Oriel scanned the field in shock, unable to locate the owner of such a small and unexpected voice. Who are you and where are you? he asked. Look down, I'm sitting on top of the flower you are about to pluck. Your fingers are still wrapped around the stem. Glancing down to the hand that was gripping the stem, he saw a tiny fairy-like creature sitting on top. Silvery iridescent wings sprouted from her back, dark colored hair twisted up into an elaborate updo decorated with tiny white blossoms. She wore a silvery dress, the waist decorated with a pink bow in the back, and slippers that matched. Her dark eyes sparkled with warmth and mischief as she looked at Oriole's slightly shocked expression. You're a fairy? Are you asking me or telling me? She said with a small laugh that sounded like a thousand tiny bells. I suppose I would be asking, since I have not seen or heard of fairies in many years. The smile on her face disappeared, and instead it was replaced by a look of sorrow. She sighed before answering, Well, I would certainly blame the mages that roam the forests. Years ago they were using fairies' wings to selfishly strengthen their own magic. Do you know what happens to a fairy when they lose their wings? They're unable to fly, which means they're unable to get away from danger. A fairy without wings is useless. In order to put a stop to this, the Lord of the Fairies ordered each of the fairy factions to go into hiding, and they were to never come out unless they were needed. Oreo looked puzzled for a moment. If you were ordered to stay hidden, then why are you out here? much less talking to a mage, when you know how greedy and evil they are. The fairy shrugged her shoulders. I don't have anything left to lose. I'm the last known fairy in existence. And besides, my talent is seeing the true nature of an individual. Like you, for instance. You're standoffish and silent most of the time, but you have a naturally warm heart. Horio scoffed at that. You can't flatter me, little fairy. I can assure you that I'm not as nice as you think I am. We've only just met. We're practically strangers. She laughed. It's just my ability. Flattery has nothing to do with it. That's easily fixable, by the way. My name is Ira. It's a pleasure to meet your acquaintance, sir mage. Somehow, the little creature sitting on the flower made the mysterious mage smile and even chuckle before he responded. It's a pleasure to meet your acquaintance, Ira. My name is Oriole. 
I am the mysterious mage of the Seven Kingdoms. See, we're not strangers now. We're practically friends. This time the mage laughed, something he hadn't done in years. I quite like you. I haven't had a wholesome conversation with someone in years. I can fix that too. Tell me more about yourself. What would you like to know about me? I'm afraid I'm not very interesting. Nonsense. Tell me anything you'd like about yourself. I'll be more than happy to listen. Very well, my dear, he answered. I've practically lived my whole life in this forest, training to be a mage. I've learned the most powerful spells and potions, and that they are best made with the freshest of flowers and herbs. My most favorite spot to come here is this field. It's not tainted by greed or dark magic like certain parts of the forest. And what about you? Tell me about yourself. Well, you know I'm the last fairy. I wander from place to place, usually. I'm the only one of my kind who has the ability that has nothing to do with actual nature, but instead the nature of an individual. Oreo was silent for a moment before he answered. You weren't really joking about your ability. I can sense your magic. It's more complex than that of an individual whose magic is tied to plants. Well, it's like I told you before. I can read people's hearts, basically. And you have a warm heart. You just don't show it often. He lightly laughed. I'm no nicer than the poisonous ivy plants I keep near my house to take care of intruders. If you weren't that nice, then you wouldn't be contemplating whether or not to offer me a place to stay in your home. Oriole wasn't shocked in the slightest. After all, she kept mentioning that her ability was to sense an individual's true nature, so it was no surprise that she figured out his true intentions. Well, since you know, would you like to stay with me for a bit? he asked. I would like that very much, she replied as she fluttered her wings and flew up to Oriole, sitting on his shoulder. The mage and the fairy set off to his home, an enchanted mansion hidden by a grove of willow trees. And, of course, the poisonous ivy that was hanging around the fence. Going inside, the both of them were a bit tired. So, they decided to sleep and promised to talk some more once the next day came.